we look for magical places. Forests, standing stones, hinges, spots where the veil of reality might be thin. The problem with doing that is that we know, deep in our hearts, there is no magic. Lots of things seem like they're magic, but they aren't. It's like John Amplis said in George A. Romero's Martin, there's no real magic, no real magic ever. It only seems like there is. Now, we don't like that. We long for magic. So, we lie to ourselves. We tell ourselves that there is magic in the world. Sometimes we say, well, maybe there's not magic now. But there was, long ago. It's gone, it's locked away somewhere. It's, it's gone somewhere, but maybe it could come back. That is what Lovecraft and Chambers and Bierce were on about with cosmic horror. That the magic was there, the dark, terrible magic. <coughs> but it's gone now. And some people want it back. Not too far removed from cosmic horror is folk horror. Folk horror tends to take place in the woods or near the woods because that's where the strange people stay. <coughs> now in folk horror, there are people who need the magic. You can think of well, Lord Summer Isle. Lord Summer Isle's not a bad guy. He just wants the crops to grow. And they can't grow without a proper sacrifice. So that's why he's forced to lure poor Sergeant Howie to come and be their wicker man. <coughs> you can also think about, oh, how sometimes a little girl has to be decapitated by a telephone pole so Lord Pie Man can have a body to use on Earth. That's what folk horror is, what it's about, and what we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. Bear with me while I get out of these scary ass woods. I'd like to take a few minutes, if I could, to talk about a film that you may not have seen, but that you definitely should have seen. And that film is Ben Wheatley's Kill List. Kill List has, well, a sneaky setup. Sorry, dogs. Kill List has, well, a sneaky setup. It introduces us to Jay and Gal, two former soldiers who now work as contract killers. They've been out of the game for a while because something went wrong in Keith. And now the money's running out. Jay has a wife and a son, and they like living well. And you can't do that with no money coming in. His wife is demanding that he get back to work soon, and Gal shows up with an offer. It's a job. It, in, it requires three hits and it will pay more money than they can imagine. Gal wants to do it because, well, partially, he seems to really enjoy the work, and also, he wants the money. Jay has to do it because, well, <laughs> the money's gone, and he's got debts, baby. He's got big debts. Now, I want to be very clear here. Jay is our protagonist, and in folk horror, we often think of the destruction of the innocent, right? Think, think of Sergeant Howie. Sergeant Howie, so kind, so good, an actual virgin. Um, think of the children in, in Hereditary. Um, they've done nothing to deserve what's going to happen to them. Uh, you, you, can, you can follow this through, just film after film. I won't, I won't belabor the point. We're not getting destruction of the innocent here, though. Jay is a cold-blooded killer for money. So, it's hard to work up a lot of sympathy if things go badly for him. 
That might be beside the point, though. Anyway, they, they get the job, and I won't, I won't spend forever telling you every little detail. The, the first target is a priest, and when Jay shows up to kill him, the priest looks at him with recognition and maybe happiness, and then thanks him. This is the moment where we know something weird's going on. Um, the second of the of the targets is a man called the librarian. Now, he's not a librarian who cares for books, but rather he uh, is in charge of videotapes. The exact nature of what's on these tapes is never revealed. We're we're let to know that it is sickening. It is disgusting. Jay and Gal, who who as we know aren't men with great moral character, they are hired killers, react strongly. We can assume that children are involved. Um, honestly, we don't have to know. We just know it's the most horrible thing you can imagine, right? Uh, so, Jay's reaction is to begin torturing the guy. And while he's torturing the librarian, the librarian thanks him. He tells him it's an honor. He tells him that this is how he wants to die. And Jay beats him to death with a hammer. Then, because Jay is still freaked out and angry about this, he decides that they need to track down associates of the librarian. They do that. There's some killing involved, of course. Uh, they actually steal a bunch of money along the way. The money is actually more than they were going to get doing the hits. So Jay and Gal decide, fuck it, not going to finish this job. And then they find out they don't have a choice. The person who hired them makes it quite clear that they finish the job or they die and their families die and their friends die and the whole, the whole you know, we'll kill the people who, who owe you money thing, right? So they have to go and, and make the final hit. And the final hit is an MP. Uh, for those of us in America, that's a, a member of parliament, um, lives in a big, big, beautiful mansion surrounded by forest. Gal and Jay decide to do some recon. They, uh, they camp in the forest where they can watch the house and see what's going on. And in the middle of the night, they see masked and robed people with torches chanting and having some ritual there in the forest. And there's a human sacrifice. And Jay, who apparently is not that level-headed, immediately opens fire on the group. He kills their leader, he kills several others, the rest of the cultists chase Jay and Gal into a series of tunnels, incredibly creepy tunnels. If you uh, don't like small spaces, not a good sequence for you. Um, and they, they kill Gal, well actually they wound Gal badly enough that he's not going to survive, he asks Jay to finish it, Jay commits a mercy killing, and gets the F out of the tunnel, um, and goes to a family cottage where his wife and son are waiting for him. Now, while they're there trying to figure out what to do, the wife sees that the tires are slashed on the car, and Jay and there are cultists outside surrounding the place. Very much like if you've seen the movie The Void. Lovely, lovely little cosmic horror film, right? That kind of thing with the cultists surrounding the building. Um, so he goes out to try to deal with it, and gets clocked over the head, knocked unconscious. When he wakes up, he's naked and wearing a very strange mask, and he's surrounded by these masked cultists and their fires and their chanting and their praying to whomever knows what. And then he has to face the final boss. It's the hunchback. It is this twisted over hunchbacked thing draped in like a, a sheet and the head covered and everything. And it comes at Jay, and he has a knife, and it is a brutal and an ugly battle, and he stabs that thing to death. And then the sheets pulled away, and he realizes that it was his wife with his son tied to her back, and he's murdered his family. And Jay doesn't seem to have any actual reaction. They place the crown on his head. And they all kneel to him. And he's the king now. And that's how the movie ends. Now, that's a lot of talking. 
um, with very little in way of, of uh, trying to explain what the hell it's about. What I think it's about is Nietzsche. You might think I'm crazy here, and I'm not going to get horribly deeply into it. But So Nietzsche talked about morality, and he said that there are basically two moralities. There is the slave morality and the master morality. You, as a regular person, you are you're tied down by the morality of the slave. The morality given to you by the people above you. They tell you how to behave, right? They tell you what's allowed. The master is not bound by this morality. To put it in uh, political science terms, there must be groups that the law binds but does not protect the slave morality, and groups that the law protects but does not bind the masters. So what's this have to do with anything? So what this has to do is Jay goes through a process where, granted, his morality is not what mine or yours would be, but still a process where he has to kill off his conception of morality, the morality he's lived with, in order to reach the point where he can be protected but not bound by the law, to become the master, as it were. So, to, to jump into Nietzsche and do it on a very naive level, he looked into the abyss, and it didn't just look back. It reached out his hand and waved and said, Hey, come on in here, buddy. So, the fighting monsters and becoming a monster thing that Nietzsche talked about, that, that is what happens with Jay. Um, Jay is on a journey to be the Ubermensch. Now, maybe I'm crazy, and even if I'm crazy, which I probably am, and even if I'm stupid, which I definitely am, go see Kill List. Uh, find it. It's, it's on Amazon. It's probably on uh, Apple TV. It's going to be on Vudu, anywhere you rent or buy movies, or go buy a physical copy. It might be in 4K. Go see it. It is amazing. It is one of the best examples of folk horror from the last 20 years. So please, go see Kill List. If you like the dumb stuff I'm doing here, hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. We need subscribers. Until we have more, nobody's going to see these videos. You can read more about this exact thing at thiscouchthing.com. Thiscouchthing.com. That's all one word, this couch thing. Um, we're also on Patreon. You can find us on the Bird app. We're on the Facebook. Um, we're going to be, we're, we're on TikTok, and we'll be everywhere else. Thanks, kids. Have a good night.